day grade lemons welcome to this last lesson in grade 11 in the last two weeks we've been talking about the lithosphere which we now know is the crust and oceans of the earth and we've been talking about exploiting it in other words getting out the minerals and the fossil fuels and a whole bunch of other things out of it and we found out that it's very useful for us to be able to exploit the lithosphere however in the last lesson we learned that unfortunately mining has got very negative effects on the environment and there was talk about about how the mining industry could reduce those effects. But now you and I can do something else. We can conserve our energy resources. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can go about conserving our energy resources. Welcome to the next lesson on lithosphere. Think about this. Are fossil fuels our only source of energy? Are there other options that may give us better solutions to our energy needs? Join KK as she tells us more. In this lesson, we will consider how fossil fuels are used to meet our growing demand for energy. Look at the impact these fuels have on the environment and explore some of the alternative sources of energy. Energy demand and supply touches each one of our lives. In our homes, on our farms, and in our factories and mines, people depend on energy to drive machines and to cool, heat, and light working and living spaces. In South Africa, we mainly use fossil fuels to meet the demand for energy. We are fortunate in having large reserves of coal, which we use to generate electricity, to make petrol, to make coke and gas, and to burn directly as coal. We also export about one-third of the coal we mine, but we have to import most of the crude oil we need. This fossil fuel is refined into a variety of products like petrol, jet fuel and diesel which are used for transport. You can see from the graph that 76% of the oil we use keeps our vehicles and aeroplanes moving. The rest is used to provide energy in a variety of other parts of our economy and in the form of non-energy resources such as plastics and nylons. Can you think of two main problems with the fact that we are so reliant on fossil fuels to meet our energy needs? Well, firstly, fossil fuels contribute vast amounts of pollution. The burning of coal and oil releases carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide and methane, all of which are greenhouse gases. In addition, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen all react with water in the air to form acid rain. Fossil fuels are certainly not clean fuels. A second major problem associated with our dependence on fossil fuels is that there is only a certain amount of oil and coal in the world. It takes millions of years for these resources to form, and so additional supplies are not being built up fast enough to replace those we are using globally in such huge amounts. For this reason, we consider them to be non-renewable resources. A time will come when we just do not have any more coal and oil to use. A further complication regarding oil is that unlike coal, we do not supply our needs. We are dependent on imported oil, which makes us vulnerable to the possibility of supplies being cut off for political reasons and to ever-rising prices. Alternative energy resources are urgently needed. South Africa is not alone in sensing this, and so there is a global effort to develop sources of energy that do not cause pollution and which are renewable, in other words, are not going to be used up, leaving nothing for the future generations. Energy resources with these characteristics are said to be sustainable. In South Africa, about 20% of all the energy consumed is in the form of electricity, and 90% of this relies on coal. ESCOM, the National Electricity Utility, generates and supplies most of South Africa's electricity, and electricity generated in South Africa also supplies about two-thirds of the electricity used elsewhere in Africa. During the 1970s and 1980s, ESCOM built huge coal-fired power stations. Here the electricity is generated by machines called generators, which are turned by turbines in order to do their work. The power to turn the turbines comes from steam. 
Coal is used to heat water which changes phase to form steam. The stations are found near coal mines so that the coal can be carried to the station along conveyor belts. These huge power stations have given us the cheapest electricity in the world. Electricity itself is a clean form of energy that gives us access to many modern conveniences. But our power stations burn huge amounts of coal and use masses of water in the process. Some power stations in other countries use oil or gas instead of coal. But as these are also fossil fuels, they do not solve the problem. We urgently need alternative, sustainable sources of electricity. At present, South Africa does make use of some alternatives to fossil fuels for this purpose. Kuburg produces about 6% of our electricity. It's the only nuclear power station we have. Here, uranium atoms are split in a reactor, releasing energy. However, the use of nuclear energy is a contentious issue. Because nuclear energy is derived from a mineral resource, it is not a renewable form of energy. There is also some apprehension about the safety of using nuclear fuel. South Africa does also produce some electricity from renewable energy resources. This time, KK talks to Dr. Christopher Cooper. Dr. Cooper, it seems there's a real need to find alternative sources of energy for generating electricity. One of the possibilities seems to be the use of biomass. Could you please tell us how this is being used at present and how it can be used in the future? Well, biomass is used for generating electricity, but only in small amounts. And that generally is within some industries, such as the paper and pulp industry, and also in the sugar industry where they use bagasse, which is a, a residue from the, paper, from the sugar making process, and wood from the paper making process. In terms of large scale generation of electricity from biomass, that could be a challenge because uh, there, is, there would need to be significant amounts of biomass used, and I'm not sure that we really have sufficient for us to use biomass in that way. Doctor, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using biomass to generate energy in terms of environmental issues? I think in terms of environmental issues, we do know that biomass is a good way of sequestrating carbon quickly, whereas using fossil fuels it's millions of years, in fact hundreds of millions of years, before that carbon is recycled. So in essence it's a very quick carbon cycle that we have if we go biomass. Uh, biomass does regrow, it it's, can be done on a sustainable basis, but we have to be careful that we do in fact use it on a, in a sustainable way. Finding space for landfills is becoming problematic. Could we use our refuse to generate electricity? That is possible. In fact, in many parts of the northern world, the western world, uh, in Europe and in parts of America, they do indeed use a refuse, either directly to burn it, or they, you can extract methane from landfills. And that methane can be used either for thermal purposes, that is for heating, or it could be used to generate electricity. Methane is one of the greenhouse gases. In fact, the methane molecule is probably 20 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than is carbon dioxide. So in fact, it would be better for us to burn the methane and turn it into carbon dioxide and gain energy, either heat or electricity from it, before we emit it as carbon dioxide. So uh, it, for me, it's, it's better that we actually use that methane rather than just vent it into the atmosphere. Well, since we have such sunny skies, what about solar power? Solar is possibly the one resource that we use least. We have been blessed with uh, significant amounts of, of solar insulation here in southern Africa, uh, yet uh, I don't believe that we utilize it as efficiently or as effectively or as much as we could. Uh, and there are a number of ways of doing that. We could, for example, use solar water heaters to heat our water. One of the challenges, though, is that those systems are fairly expensive. And that uh, means that it's really middle class and the, the upper income groups that can use so, uh, solar water heating, or rather can afford solar water heaters on their homes. Uh, we could design our houses better to make optimal use of solar gain during winter and by designing 
the houses properly. In fact, we could uh, make them even cooler in summer simply by having sufficient overhang of the roof or, ha or orientating the house properly. Taking solar further, we can also use solar for generating electricity and essentially there are two options there. The first is photovoltaics, which is those little solar cells that you see. Uh, unfortunately, the panels are expensive and the systems are expensive, which uh, again puts it out of reach of, of many in, the, in our society. Uh, there has been work on designing more efficient and cheaper panels, but even so, uh, for the short and even possibly medium term, photovoltaics is going to be standalone uh, applications rather than grid based applications. Okay, the second way of generating electricity from solar is to concentrate the solar uh, light and heat onto a central point. This can be done using mirrors which uh, then results in a very high temperature and from there you can heat up a medium, usually oil, which can be used uh, as a heat storage mechanism which can then be used to generate electricity. Doctor, what are the chances of us harnessing wind energy? We can harness it. In fact, we in South Africa already have three uh, test turbines down at uh, in, uh, near Cape Town, which is operated. Those are operated by Eskom to gain wind profiles and to see how the, the turbines operate in South African conditions. And uh, there is an independent power producer, the Darling Wind Farm, which hopefully will shortly uh, erect a number of wind turbines, possibly up to five megawatts in total, which can contribute. Wind is a nice clean form of energy and it can be used but there are operational parameters which may inhibit its use in South Africa. Uh, you do need a fairly strong and very consistent wind to make it worthwhile. If you're going to rely on wind energy, what do you do for backup when there is no wind? In fact it goes for, for solar as well. What do you do at night? You cannot generate electricity from solar at night. And so the same, you cannot generate electricity from wind when there is no wind. Uh, there are a number of wind sites in the world and there are countries that do use wind energy fairly uh, effectively. But it's only one small part of the whole package, of the whole mix in providing uh, electricity into the, the national grid. Are we likely to use more hydroelectric power in the future? Well, we do already use hydropower in South Africa. We have two dams on the Orange River, at the Harip Dam and at the Van der Kloof Dam, that do generate uh, electricity from hydropower. South Africa is a very dry country, and our opportunities within the country are really limited. Uh, Large-scale hydro, I suspect that we already have built all of the, the large facilities that we can. But there are opportunities for mini and micro hydro, which are very small. Uh, and they could provide electricity into rural communities. But we need to recognize this is a very small amount of electric electricity that's produced. In a country to the north of us, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, there is a potential hydro site at Inga, which is about 200 kilometers downstream from Kinshasa. That offers the potential for as much generating capacity as we currently have in South Africa and that could indeed provide significant amounts of electricity to South Africa but also to the rest of the continent. Well, it's clear that there's no short route to a more sustainable energy supply in the near future. We are likely to be using fossil fuels for some time to come. In what ways can ordinary people like ourselves make better use of energy resources? First we need to understand the challenges that this planet is facing. And then we need to look at ourselves and how each of us uses energy. We need to recognize that there are opportunities for us to, to use energy more efficiently. For example, and some simple examples is lighting. Many of us leave lights on. When there's no one in the room, we can switch those off. We could change our uh, luminaires to more efficient compact fluorescence. We can be more uh, careful with how we use hot water because that too in most of South African homes is generated from electricity. In terms of uh, travel, how do you travel? 
one person in a car? I'm sure you do. Could you not walk? Could you not use a bicycle? But we have to, first of all, educate ourselves about it, about what we can do, and then do it. Uh, th th there is another issue about energy efficiency that I perhaps also need to touch on, and something that hasn't really been recognized until fairly recently, and that is what is known as standby power. For example, you watch TV, don't you? You don't switch it off completely at the wall plug. You just switch it off with a remote. Okay? And there will be a little light glowing somewhere. Well, the little light may not draw much energy, but I suggest that you have a look at the operating manual that came with many of the electronic appliances that we use and have a look at how much power actually is used for standby mode so that we simply have the, the ease of operation of just walking and touching the the, re, uh, the, the start button and, it, and the piece of equipment is immediately operational. Fairly significant. In New Zealand, the estimate is 10% of electricity is actually used for standby power. So you're saying that it would be better to actually go to the TV and switch it off Most completely different. and Most your DVD yes. machines and all that? Correct. Okay, I do realize though that what the manufacturers have done is that they've put in uh, programming options and timing options which then is disrupted when you do switch it off. But we need to look at the energy resources that we have and how we're using them. And it is more efficient for us to actually switch those appliances off completely. Another issue that we tend to forget in South Africa is that a significant section of our population doesn't have access to commercial forms of energy or don't have an, an electric connection in their homes. These are typically rural communities and how do or how can you if you're in a rural community use energy more efficiently well you have a challenge there are some ways of making fires that are more efficient uh, particularly if you use coal rather than start the fire from the bottom you actually start it from the top it results in less smoke there is in fact a department of minerals and energy program underway at the moment in some of the urban areas where coal is used to a large extent where this new method of making a fire is being promoted and it does use less coal and it does most definitely use, uh, produce less smoke. A rural community using firewood needs to obviously use that more efficiently and more effectively. They need to ensure that they do not merely chop down trees and end up with a barren landscape. It's essential that they cut branches off trees rather than cutting down the whole tree. A move from firewood to kerosene or better still to LPG makes economic sense and it also makes efficiency sense because uh, it is much easier to control a gas stove or a kerosene stove than it is to control a wood fire and moving, that, moving to those fields would also be a good move where that is possible. But again, we do recognize the challenges of access within rural communities. Thank you for giving us this interview, Dr. Cooper. There's really lots to think about. There sure is. <laughs> and we need to start with ourselves. Each of us needs to understand that we are responsible for part of the, the energy challenge the environmental challenge and it's how we react to that and what we do that's going to make the difference. Well, I am sure you have realized the importance of conserving our energy resources. Each of us, individuals as well as the government, have the responsibility to ensure that we use these resources in a way that is sustainable for future generations. We're at grade 11, so as they all said, we need to make a difference, okay? But what do you need to take out of this for the exams? Well, you need to be able to list a couple of ways that we can actually improve our energy usage, okay? In other words, how can we conserve energy? You also need to know what the alternative energy sources are that they listed, and well at least two or three of them and you need to know the pros and cons like why it's good that we're using it and what are the problems so make sure you understand those points then go do the questions in the turnable system have a great day